The Premier League has been going strong for over 30 years, captivating fans around the globe. But while questions about the financial health of the Premier League persist, one thing is clear. Some teams have managed to deliver massive returns. We've done the hard work, meticulously tracking the financial performance of every club across every season of the Premier League. That's over 600 sets of accounts analysed to answer one burning question. Who are the top moneymakers in Premier League history? Our key metric, operating profit. For each team in our top 10, we'll kick things off with revenue and sprint through the key cost categories, revealing the strategies that have propelled these clubs to the pinnacle of the financial table. So without further ado, let's dive straight in to number 10. Arsenal, 2017-2018. Arsene Wenger's final season at the Emirates was not a success on the pitch. Arsenal's sixth place finish was their worst in 20 years. On top of that, they were emphatically beaten by Man City in the League Cup final. But off the pitch, the Gunners delivered their best ever profit, despite the absence of Champions League football. When it comes to revenue, 2018 wasn't special. In fact, 20 million down on the year before. And after accounting for staff costs, operating expenses and stadium costs, it's still no banner year. What fueled Arsenal's only appearance on this list? Transfer fees. The club raked in 29 million, driven by 120 million in player sales. There was a glut of moves to Premier League rivals, including Alex Oxlade Chamberlain to Liverpool, Alexis Sanchez to Man United, and Theo Walcott to Everton. These sales were reinvested in Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and Alexandre Lacazette, and while subsequent seasons saw Arsenal succumb to operating losses, 2018's best result of 78 million gives them pride of place in the number 10 slot. At number 9, Manchester United 2016-2017. This year marked the beginning of the Mourinho era at Old Trafford. United filled the trophy cabinet, bagging both the League Cup and the Europa League. But these cup successes weren't what moved the financial needle. United's revenue jumped 13% to 581 million, thanks to a 50 million increase in Premier League TV money, despite finishing a position lower in sixth. Why? The Premier League's new enhanced TV deal. Staff costs accounted for 260 million, under half of the increased revenues. In subsequent years though, United's persistent squad investments would chew up this additional revenue. Operating costs and stadium fees were all in line with other years, but despite sinking 114 million in transfer fees, those additional revenues allowed United to deliver their best return of the decade. This year's result of 81 million secures United the number 9 spot. But is it the Red Devil's only appearance on this list? In at number 8, Tottenham, 2013-2014. The AVB era ended in December with Tim Sherwood taking the reins as caretaker in an otherwise forgettable season. And revenue was the lowest of the decade. So how did this year end up on the list? After factoring in staff costs, operating expenses and stadium and facilities, 2014 still doesn't stand out. But like their North London rivals, transfer dealings pushed them into the top 10. Spurs bringing in 54 million of net income. But rather than a glut of sales, this was powered by one massive move. The 85 million transfer of Gareth Bale to Real Madrid. That sale boosted the bottom line to 83 million and secured Spurs the number 8 spot. At number 7, Manchester City, 2022-2023. How much money do you make for winning the treble? For Manchester City, that monumental achievement was matched in revenue. They became the first Premier League club to surpass 700 million. And whilst 60% of that was swallowed up in wages and a further 170 million in operating costs and 11 million on facilities, City managed to restrict transfer costs to just 24 million. This was partly funded by the sales of Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus and Alexander Sinchenko. That enabled City to deliver a full trophy cabinet and 86 million in operating profit. However, questions still remain over the now infamous 115 charges, which will finally be heard next month. Number 6. Leicester City 2016-2017 Leicester's title win in 2016 will go down as one of the league's greatest ever achievements. But the full financial rewards weren't felt until the subsequent season. Why? Champions League football. 
Yes, revenue in the year following the title win skyrocketed by 81%. UEFA money alone banking 70 million on top of benefits from the new TV deal. That jump left a lot more headroom when adding in staff costs, operating expenses and stadium costs. On top of all those, the Foxes also generated 9 million in transfer profit from selling N'Golo Kante to Chelsea. That put less than 95 million in the black, a far cry from more recent seasons where they've suffered significant losses and still face a possible points deduction for PSR breaches. At number 5, Tottenham, 2018-2019. This season will be remembered for Tottenham's first ever Champions League final, falling at the final hurdle in a 2-0 loss to Liverpool. It also marked the move into their new 60,000-seater stadium in April 2019, having played most of the season at Wembley. That run to the final in Madrid, on top of securing fourth place in the league, led to Spurs' largest revenues of the pre-COVID era, delivering over 460 million. And despite a 30 million jump in wages, these remained under 40% of the increased revenues. Operating costs increased with Champions League football, and stadium costs began to ramp up as they entered their new stadium. However, the move in at the end of the season was far off the 72 million incurred the next year for a full season at their new home. This enabled Spurs to sink 37 million in transfer fee costs, including additions of Davidson Sanchez and Lucas Moura, and still deliver 113 million in profit, securing the number five spot. Though the story has shifted since, with four years of consecutive losses. At number four, Manchester United, 2008-2009. For the oldest entrant on this list, we need to rewind the clocks 15 years back to 2009. Back in the Sir Alex Ferguson era, United delivered their third consecutive Premier League title and reached the final of the Champions League, losing out to Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. That delivered £279 million in revenue, a far cry from what the Red Devils deliver today. But after accounting for staff costs, operating expenses and costs to the stadium, 2009 is a solid performance, but just before the end of the financial year, the Red Devils cashed in on Cristiano Ronaldo for a then record £80 million. That gave United net transfer income of 43 million, which jumped 2009's profits to 128 million and secured fourth place on this list. At number three, Brighton and Hove Albion, 2022 2023. The newest member of the Premier League to feature in this top 10, Brighton's season saw the Seagulls deliver a sixth place finish and secure European football for the first time. That generated 205 million for Brighton, the smallest top line to make this top 10 but still a significant step up due to the 155 million in Premier League money. Despite an increasing wage bill, this was covered by the additional top line. Operating expenses were actually lower than the year before, in part due to around 20 million in compensation for Graham Potter and his team moving to Chelsea. And after stadium costs, this was already Brighton's best financial performance, but transfer activity skyrocketed Brighton to new heights. The sales of Mark Cucurella, Yves Bissouma and Leandro Trossard helped generate 89 million in transfer income, boosting Brighton to 131 million of operating profit, taking the number three spot. And with Europa League football and further big ticket sales of Moises Casado and Alexis McAllister, it wouldn't be a surprise to see the Seagulls post a second entry on this list. At number two, Liverpool, 2017-2018. The Jurgen Klopp regime was beginning to take shape at Anfield, securing fourth place in the Premier League and reaching the Champions League final. That result? 455 million in revenue for the Reds, but 80 million below the following year when they would get their hands back on the Champions League trophy. After cycling through staff costs, operating and stadium costs, we can see the European season of success still outshines 2018. But this year saw Liverpool cash in on Philip Coutinho for 146 million allowing the club to invest heavily in new signings such as Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah and Andy Robertson. The result of transfers ins and outs was 46.5 million in income, taking Liverpool to 131 million and securing the second spot. So who has delivered the biggest bottom line in Premier League history? Tottenham, 2017-2018 It's back to North London for Spurs' first full season at Wembley with the build of their new stadium underway. On the pitch, Spurs finished third in the league. But how did they deliver the Premier League's best ever performance, despite making 80 million less revenue than the season after? The wage bill remained healthy at 148 million, under 40% of revenue. 
Operating costs remained flat at 73, despite including fees to Wembley to host Spurs home games for that season. But while the club were between grounds, Spurs stadium costs dropped to under 4 million, as they didn't have to feel the pinch of spend on their new stadium until they moved in. That put 2018 ahead of their Champions League final season, and they broke even when it came to the transfer bill. The big ticket sale of Carl Walker for 45 million to Man City offset investment in the squad. That tipped Spurs to a Premier League best ever return of 157 million in operating profit, securing the biggest Premier League bottom line ever. With three entries in the top 10, Spurs have made a strong case for being the best when it comes to boosting the bottom line. But as we alluded to earlier, the story has shifted with four years of consecutive losses. So if you want to find out the full story on Spurs' financial saga, you can check out this video here. But with that, we're out.